Welcome to Example Instruments 3, Frequency and Amplitude. In this example, we will be looking at ways um, of how to control the frequency and the amplitude of an instrument in tone directly, instead of just um, using the note on and off function to play half tone notes. So this is the uh, finished example, and I'll be walking through this step by step. So. The first thing that is um, a bit of a disclaimer, maybe, is uh, it's important to know is that this really only works with an internal sound engine. So there's no point in trying this with MIDI or OSC um, tone engines because they, they just work in a different way. So if you want to control the sound directly, this is only possible with the internal engine, the default engine, though. So um, the first thing that we um, that we need to do here is um, to tell the tone instrument that we are using. So uh, we are using the default instrument, which is zero. So we can just write tone instrument dot, and then we need to the um, need to disable the ADSR. Remember, the ADSR is the envelope that controls the amplitude of a note started with the note on function and released with a, a note of function so so this if this is enabled it and and uh, controls the um, amplitude all the time and we can't set the amplitude by hand so if we disable this um, what's happening now is that uh, the amplitude of instrument zero is uh, released from the envelope adsr envelope and we can now set the um, the amplitude of that instrument manually so uh, maybe you can just try it like this. So instrument, and if you have auto completion turned on, you <laughs> can see that that this is something um, that should work. Apparently, my auto completion is not doing so well. But anyway, so if we now uh, run this sketch, we should hear like a note. Yeah. So now we hear a note that plays continuously. We disabled the um, envelope and we set the amplitude to 25%. So, um, but maybe this is actually a bit, little bit, um, yeah, annoying to just hear a simple tone. So, um, what I think is, is might be, might be more interesting to use the mouse to control this. So we might just use the y-axis of the mouse and then map it onto the um, amplitude of the note from zero, which is off, and to 75%. So let's see. Okay, now according to our mouse motion, the amplitude is, is changed. One little note maybe at this point might be relevant, interesting, is that the um, that uh, if you if you move the mouse really quickly, you can maybe maybe hear a little bit of a of a kind of a distortion in the otherwise very smooth sine wave tone note frequency played, um, and that is actually due to the fact that uh, like drastic changes in amplitude, um, if they happen in, in 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 a very edgy way, um, in a very fast way, they can actually cause like corruption of the audio signal. So. Um, since we are really directly changing the amplitude, um, we can create these edges by just our mouse movement and, um, and hear these distortions. Um, in, a, in a normal audio programming context, um, usually amplitude changes are um, um, triggered or facilitated by RAMs. Um, so, so, but since this is like a very raw sketching environment, um, we can, create amplitude changes that actually cause like little distortions in the audio. If that annoys you, then you have to write a function or um, a mechanic that actually changes the amplitude smoothly over time, not drastically from one step to the other. Just a little word of warning, okay? So this, now we can control the, uh, the, the amplitude directly. Also, since we are not using node on to set a specific um, node or frequency in terms, we can now also um, change the frequency of the um, that instrument for which we disabled the ADSR. 
So we can similarly we can go set m uh, frequency frequency and set it to some um, some value. So this will be very low. Let's see if we can still hear it. Yeah, it's somewhat on the edge of the audible range. Everything's it's it's barely audible except for the distortions then that are really much more present uh, even in the low frequency. So we also connect that to the um, to the mouse motion. So we maybe go from fifty five hertz to well eight hundred eighty maybe, and that's that's a rather high pitch frequency already. So if we run this now. So on the left, it's very low. On the right, it's really high pitch. That's already very funny. Um, Okay, so um, maybe let me just copy over this um, this code here. And what it basically does, it visualizes the frequency and the audio um, by actually reading the current frequency and the current amplitude from our instrument. So like a very light gray uh, circle means like soft tone and very Actually, I have a different I have a different range here so the visualization is a little bit buggy here but what we are actually the the function the method we are using here the two methods we're using here get frequency and get amplitude are used to visualize the the um, the amplitude and the frequency um, amplitude is used for the darkness of the black and the frequency is used to scale the ellipse. Okay, one last time. So a small circle is very high pitch and low pitch, huge circle. Okay, so this showed how to, uh, this example showed how to control this directly. Okay, see you in the next one.